My ladies and gentlemen, gender equality is a big issue in Germany and in all developed countries. Equal treatment of men and women is a human right enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, as well as in the Constitution of the overwhelming majority of nations. The Nigerian Constitution of 1999, as amended, prohibits the discrimination by reason of sex. Unfortunately, what we see in real life is often not commensurate with, hum with human rights and constitutional principles, particularly in the field of non-discrimination and gender equality. But empowerment of women is not only a legal necessity, it is also a key to development. Nigeria has the highest population in any African country. With a population of over 170 million, Nigeria is ranked the world's seventh most populated country. Of this magnitude, 49% are female, some 85 million girls and women. Comparatively, 38% of women in Nigeria lack formal education, as against 25 for men, and only 4% of women have higher education against the 7% of their male counterparts. Nigeria ranks 118 of 134 countries in the Gender Equality Index. In 2012, DFID, the British Development Agency, made a gender report on Nigeria and it shows that gender inequality not only exists in the country but at highly worrying levels. There is a lack of gender balance in the economy, education, politics, health, access to justice and almost all areas of human development. According to the report, Nigeria's at the time 80.2 million women and girls have signif had significantly worse life chances than men and also their sisters in comparable societies. 60 to 79 percent of the rural workforce is women, but men are five times more likely to own land. In eight northern states, over 80% of women are unable to read compared to 54% for men. 70.8% of young women aged 20 to 29 in the Northwest are unable to read and write and only 3% of females complete secondary school in the northern zones. Parts of the six conclusions of the report is that until women in Nigeria begin to contribute more to household cash income, their ability to influence spending at household level will continu continue to be limited. Commenting on the foregoing, it is apparent that no appreciable development can be made either at the local, national or international platform without recognizing girls and women as equal players in the game of life whilst empowering, upskilling and investing in them for a better world. When we empower women, we empower communities, nations and the entire human family. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said. We live in a world where the majority of girls and women face poverty, gross inequality, molestation and injustice, which could run through from birth to death, from poor education to poor nutrition, to violence and brutalization, to vulnerable and low pay employment, the sequence of discrimination and atrocities of women may suffer during her entire life is unacceptable, but all too common in our global society. In some parts of the world, 
Also in parts of Nigeria, female genital mutilation is a common practice. It is an atrocity which must be ended. In promoting women's livelihood, the 2012 DFID Gender Report on Nigeria recommends that government policy should prioritize agriculture and rural development because 54 million of Nigeria's 85 million women live and work in rural areas where they constitute 60 to 70 percent of the rural workforce. It also advocates the formulation and implementation of laws that will assist the female gender in actualizing, actualizing the mandate. <coughs> On education, the rep report advised the creation of incentives for all girls, girls to complete primary and secondary education, whilst delivering free education to girls and better funding for the educational sector, both at the state and national levels. Certainly, there are some attempts to improve the representation of women in official life in Nigeria. But in the current National Assembly, less than 7% of the lawmakers are women. There are only eight female senators out of 109 and only 24 female representatives out of 360. You just heard the example from Rwanda, where it is uh, just the other way around, I think, almost. <laughs> To date, there is not one single female governor. With elections in a, a few months ahead, this could change. And as women make up 50% of the voters, this should change. And it is the political party's responsibility to give women the chance to run for office on their platforms. The recent national conference made a number of proposals to strengthen women's representation in politics. It is up to women voters to urge politicians for implementation of these proposals. And our experience from developed countries, particularly from Germany, is that it is, will not be done on a voluntary basis. Um, the experience is that we had to introduce quotas in the political parties to assure that uh, women are nominated as candidates for political offices. And we are just have an ongoing discussion in Germany on introducing a quota <coughs> for the supervising boards of uh, big companies. And uh, I think it's a big achievement that uh, through this development, not only in left-leaning parties, but also in the conservative, conservative ones, women made their ways into political offices and now uh, you know, for a number of years, we have a, a, a woman running our, our, our gov government as Prime Minister, as Federal Chancellor Angela Merkel. Nigeria has wonderful, strong and well-trained women who can perform with excellence in government. The Minister of Finance, Dr. Ngozi Onkonyo Iwala, is just one example. There are many more. Aisha Babangida is among us. <laughs> I've seen that. Uh, the f famous actor Kate Henshaw is among us and uh, she wants to run for, for governor. Yeah. I wish good luck to all the, the female candidates in the, in the next elections here. But still much can be done to improve the possibilities of, for women to be represented in the administration, in politics, in the parliament and in government. Our government and, on, and our embassy are aware of the problem. We have organized a trip for Nigerian journalists in 2012 to Germany in order to create, create awareness and sensitize the Nigerian public. This fight for gender equality can only be successful with you and I playing our individual yet concerted roles towards successful women's leadership, strengthening women's economic empowerment, ending violence against women, promoting women's participation in peace and security processes, and ensuring that public planning and budgeting responds to the needs and rights of women. In this sense, I wish 
to this conference a very good outcome, fruitful deliberations, and a very lively exchange of views on this very important topic. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>